COVID-19 is an infectious disease caused by severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2. When a person is infected, the most common symptoms include fever, cough, and shortness of breath. To start a test, the samples can be collected by a nasopharyngeal swab or an oropharyngeal swab. For nasopharyngeal specimen, the swab is inserted in the nostril and gently moved forward into the nasopharynx, then it is rotated for a specified period time to collect secretions that contain the virus. Once the swabbing is applied, the swab is placed immediately into sterile tube containing a viral transport medium. The standard method of coronavirus testing is polymerase chain reaction, PCR which is a method that used widely in molecular biology to make millions to billions of copies of a specific DNA fragment rapidly. Coronaviruses contain an extraordinarily long single-stranded RNA genome. To detect these viruses with PCR, RNA molecules must be converted into their complementary DNA sequences by reverse transcriptus. Then the newly synthesized DNA can be amplified by standard PCR procedures. This approach is universally known as RT-PCR. To perform this method, basically viral RNA should be extracted. Several RNA purification kits are available for convenient, fast and effective isolation. To extract the viral RNA by using commercial kit, the sample is first added into a microcentrifuge tube. Then it is mixed with a lysis buffer. This buffer is highly denaturing and is usually consists of phenol and guanidine isothiocyanate. Also, RNase inhibitors are usually present in the lysis buffer to ensure isolation of intact viral RNA. Once the lysis buffer is added, the tube is mixed by pulse vortexing and incubated at room temperature. Then the virus is lysed under the highly denaturing conditions provided by the lysis buffer. Once the sample is lysed, a purification procedure is carried out by using a spin column. The sample is loaded onto the spin column. Then a centrifugation is performed. This procedure is a solid phase extraction method in which the stationary phase consists of a silica matrix. Under optimal salt and pH conditions, RNA molecules are bind to the silica gel membrane and at the same time, protein and other contaminants are not retained. After centrifugation the spin column is placed into a clean collection tube and the filtrate is discarded. Then a wash buffer is added. The column is put in a centrifuge again, forcing the wash buffer through the membrane. This removes any remaining impurities from the membrane, leaving only the RNA bound to the silica gel. Once the sample is washed, the column is placed in a clean microcentrifuge tube and an elution buffer is added. Then, a centrifugation is carried out, forcing the elution buffer through the membrane. The elution buffer removes the viral RNA from the spin column. And a purified RNA, which is free of protein, inhibitors, and other contaminants is obtained. After the extraction of the viral RNA, the next step is the preparation of the reaction mixture for PCR amplification. In this step, a master mix is used which is a premixed concentrated solution that consists of buffer, reverse transcriptase enzyme, nucleotides, forward primer, reverse primer, Tachman probe, and DNA polymerase. Finally, to complete this reaction mixture, the RNA template is added. The tube is mixed by pulse vortexing. Then the reaction mixture is loaded into a PCR plate, which generally contains 96 wells, allowing the analysis of several samples at the same time. Next, the plate is placed in a PCR machine, which is essentially a thermal cycler. Real-time RT-PCR is used for the detection of the new coronavirus 2019 by the amplification of target sequences in the RDRP gene, the E gene and the N gene. The choice of the target gene depends on the primers and the probe sequences. The first step in RT-PCR is reverse transcription. The first strand complementary DNA synthesis is primed with the PCR reverse primer, which hybridizes to a complementary part of the virus RNA genome. Reverse transcriptase then adds DNA nucleotides onto the three prime end of the primer, synthesizing DNA complementary of the viral RNA. The temperature and duration of this step depend on the primer, the target RNA and the reverse transcriptase used.
Next, an initial denaturation step is applied, causing denaturation of the RNA-DNA hybrids. This step is required for the activation of DNA polymerase and simultaneously the inactivation of reverse transcriptase. PCR consists of a series of thermal cycles, with each cycle consisting of denaturation, annealing, and extension steps. Denaturation step consists of heating the reaction chamber to 95 degrees Celsius. And it is used for denaturation of the double-stranded DNA template. In the next step, the reaction temperature is lowered to 58 degrees Celsius, allowing annealing of the forward primer to its complementary part of the single-stranded DNA template. The annealing temperature relies directly on length and composition of the primers. In the extension step, the DNA polymerase synthesizes a new DNA strand complementary to the DNA template strand by adding free nucleotides from the reaction mixture that are complementary to the template in the 5' to 3' direction. The temperature at this step depends on the DNA polymerase used. After the first cycle, the double-stranded DNA target is obtained. Then, the denaturation of this double-stranded DNA is performed, yielding two single-stranded DNA molecules. In the next step, the reaction temperature is lowered, allowing annealing of the primers to each of the single-stranded DNA templates and annealing of the Tachman probe to its complementary part of the target DNA. Tachman probe consists of a fluorophore covalently attached to the 5' end of the oligonucleotide probe. The fluorescence is emitted by the fluorophore when it is excited by the cycler's light source. Also, this probe consists of a quencher at the 3' end. The close proximity of the reporter to the quencher prevents detection of its fluorescence. In the extension step, DNA polymerase synthesizes new strands. When the polymerase reaches a Tachman probe, its endogenous 5' nuclease activity cleaves the probe, separating the dye from the quencher. With each cycle of PCR, more dye molecules are released, resulting in an increase in fluorescence intensity, proportional to the amount of amplicon synthesized. This method allows the estimation of the amount of a given sequence present in a sample. The number of double-stranded DNA pieces is doubled in each cycle, therefore, PCR can be used to analyze extremely small amounts of sample. For the measurement of the fluorescence signal, a tungsten halogen lamp, an excitation filter, mirrors, lens, an emission filter, and a charge-coupled device CCD camera are used. Filtered light from the lamp is reflected off mirror, passes through a condensing lens, and is focused into the center of each well. Then fluorescent light emitted from the wells reflects off the mirror, passes through an emission filter, and is detected by the CCD camera. In each PCR cycle, light from excited fluorophore can be detected by the CCD camera, which converts the light that it captures into digital data. This method is known as real-time PCR, which allows the monitoring of the progress of the PCR reaction as it occurs in real time.